one. So I wanted to do this video for a while now, but I think now is a great time. Four is six months old, and we have been, um, up until that mark, we were successfully, exclusively breastfeeding. She's now started on solid via baby led weaning, but um, yeah, we breastfed for six months successfully, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I wanted to talk about the things that I did, some tips and tricks, some things that I think are good to have or use, some resources, and I know my story is unique to me and Floor, um, so I'm not saying this will work for everyone always, but these are the things that helped me. So first of all, I don't know if new people know this, but um, I've been interested in lactation for a long time now. I'm actually getting my bachelor's in lactation consulting currently, and um, I've just had a general interest in lactation for about eight years. So I had a pretty solid background about recipe, but it, until I had four, there was so much I didn't know. First of all, the first thing when you even start to think about breastfeeding when you're pregnant or trying to conceive is research, research, research. I think it's important to surround yourself with it, support not only um, your family, but coworkers, friends, online support. I belong to several support groups, not support groups, like forums and things where you can go and ask questions and get feedback. There's tons of things out there. Um, a few things that I think are great are taking a breastfeeding class at your local hospital, attending late late league meetings, online support such as Kelly Mom, which is like the end all be all. I mean, it's awesome, up to date information, everything. The Leaky Boob on Facebook. Um, there's the What to Expect breastfeeding group. There's tons. So don't forget about those. And one thing about taking a local breastfeeding class through your hospital is I've heard of some women taking the breastfeeding class and at the end of the class there is somebody who's handing out formula samples. So I would be a bit wary about taking a class that is, so, you know, they're handing out formula samples because it's kind of setting you up to fail. Um, I'm a strong believer in not having any formula in the house before the child is born or like within the, you know, the first couple weeks because it's too much of a temptation to just go and make a bottle when you should be nursing. So let's get started on how me and four successfully nursed. So first of all, um, bring your pump to the hospital. I brought my pump to the hospital, I used it to stimulate contractions, and I was able to express some colostrum, and my milk came in um, one night when they were threatening to supplement her. So, I think it's a great idea to bring your pump. If you don't have a pump, ask to use the pump, the rental pumps, or my room had a pump. I think some people say, oh, you don't worry, don't worry about bringing your pump, but to me it was invaluable. I was able to get her milk when they were threatening to supplement her because they thought she had a low blood sugar. And they were telling me that donut milk would take too long to thaw when it takes like literally a minute to thaw. But anyway, I brought my pump and that was a big thing for me. Um, refuse the pacifier in the hospital at least for a few days until you can get a hang of a hunger cue versus like just wanting to suck soothe. And I still think it's a good idea to not use the pacifier because when they're sucking to soothe, they're still kind of stimulating your production and getting their um, needs, ver or your, su their supply your supply versus demand in check. So we didn't use the pacifier for at least six to seven weeks, I think. So, and it was short lived too. So um, I understand that you don't want to be a human pacifier and it can be really frustrating and sore, but that's my take on that. Um, we did syringe feed in the hospital when they did threaten to supplement her. Um, I did pump and my milk came in and I pumped, I don't know, like two ounces or something, but we used that milk in syringes to feed her. Um, I was exhausted because I had, I didn't have an epidural or anything and I had a really long labor, 38 hours, so I was really physically exhausted. So my husband actually syringe fed her um, a couple times, once in the hospital and like I think once when we got home because I was just so exhausted. I don't really recommend that either because again that's the supply versus demand thing. I, I had a comment, somebody left something about syringe feeding that their baby was sucking on the syringe. They shouldn't be sucking on the syringe. Um, what they did was teach me to put 
your pinky up until I think it was like either the yeah, the first knuckle and let them suck on that and then insert the syringe to the side and then slowly push it in so they're not sucking on like the syringe they're not getting used to that they're not sucking on a bottle nipple so they're not getting used to that they're just sucking on the tip of your finger which can be used if you um, are really frustrated too for a soothing method temporarily um, try to introduce bottles not too soon and not too late. We waited till four weeks and and inconsistently, and Floor does still kind of have problems with taking a bottle. My my mother in law watches her, so she does have problems with that. But I would not introduce them too soon either, um, just because of the nipple confusion thing. I know some moms say, "Oh, my baby never had nipple confusion," but some babies do. So there's that. If you have the baby, you should be breastfeeding the baby. You should not be giving the baby a bottle. I never associated myself with the bottle. I always breastfed for. If I, if she was gonna have a bottle, her dad or um, my mother-in-law would give her the bottle. If I had her, I was nursing her. And those first couple weeks, and even like months, um, you really need to, when you have the baby, you need to be nursing the baby. If you're out and about and you give a bottle, that's a misfeeding and your body's gonna think that you don't need that supply so you're not gonna have it so try not to give the baby the bottle you breastfeed whoever else needs to give them the bottle and ideally you would pump while the baby was taking that bottle because then you would be keeping your supply the same uh, t another tip is if you feel uncomfortable in the first couple weeks or whenever about nursing in public feed your baby right before you get out of the car I had a friend who was uncomfortable feeding in public and she didn't realize that she could just take her baby out of the car seat and bring them to the front seat and feed them. There's a lot more space in the front seat than sitting crammed in the back seat. You can go and do what you need to do and then um, you can nurse them again when you get back in the car. But that way you're not putting yourself in a situation where you would need the bottle in public if you're not feeling comfortable breastfeeding in public. That's really not a big deal. <laughs> in the hospital, Bring your, bring your baby to the breast as soon as you possibly can. If you end up having a C-section or emergency section scheduled, whatever, and the baby's in trouble and needs to go to the NICU or whatever, ask for a pump. You need to start stimulating your supply ASAP, especially cesareans. There's always seems to be, um, I mean, there are successful people who have a cesarean and breastfeed right away. But they're always, the stories I've heard are women have trouble from the get-go when they have a c-section the supply doesn't come in it's not there yada 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 so ask for a pump if you're going to be away from your baby bring that baby to your breast as soon as possible even if you don't know what you're doing bring the baby to the breast the nurses there should know enough to help you teach you how to you know breastfeed in those few crucial hours or whatever um i was separated from floor for an hour as soon as i got her i bought her i brought her to my breast I did miss that initial skin to skin contact and I'm sad about that, yes, but as soon as I got her, I brought her to the breast. So that, that skin to skin, that suckling, everything is super important as soon as you can. Feed as often as they show hunger cues. Um, a lot of old school people will say, oh, you're spoiling the baby if they make it and you go to feed them. But they're newborn, that's the instinct. You need to feed them as soon as they show a hung hunger cue. Crying is the last hunger cue that you want to hear. And I know that when you're exhausted, first time mom, really, you know, overwhelmed, um, it's hard to feed them every single time they demand it, but it's crucial. Um, you and the baby don't know what you're doing, obviously, first of all. So what I did was just express a little bit of colostrum and let her taste that on her mouth and then bring her to the nipple. Or like try to like not push her but like gently guide her into a latch so the baby doesn't know what they're doing it's learned for both of you so you want to give them a taste of what they're going to get into if your supply is not there if you don't, you don't have colostrum just bring them into a latch and then um, that sucking should stimulate and keep trying throughout your whole hospital stay throughout those whole first weeks it's expected that newborns are going to lose a certain percentage of their body weight so don't be too stressed out about it and don't try to supplement right away 
it's normal. So don't be afraid, don't be too worried about it. If your physician isn't worried about it, just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep bringing the baby to the breast. Explore different holds. I, when I first had floor, I was trying to cradle her hold, that was not working. We finally settled into the football hold for a long, long time. Being plus size and telling that I had inverted nipples, which that, I don't know, I think that was kind of like a misdiagnosis. But anyway, the football hold was great. It gave me a lot of control. It gave me control to move her head. Um, I didn't have to support her body. If the cradle hold, hold works for you, that's great. Cross cradle hold, that's great. Um, just keep trying all different kinds of positions. Find one that is comfortable for both of you. Um, try holding the breast like a sandwich and bringing it to them for the latch. I was so worried about smushing her nose, so I would pull back. And I think when I was pulling back, it was inhibiting her from actually latching on. So kind of hold like a sandwich. And you can kind of Google that hold, but it just shows you, it presents them with the nipple and the areola, and it just shows them what they should be latching on to. Use different types of pillows. I got the breast fin plus size twin version and the boppy and I used both and I honestly used regular pillows the most when she was um, a newborn. My regular pillows were easy to stack up next to me because she was in that football hold. I could put one across my lap, one across or on my side, support her. When we were like on the couch and stuff, the breast fed was a little bit too big and stuff, but in the glider it was good. The boppy is good for the computer chair. I mean, it's all different kinds of situations. You just need to explore what is going to be comfortable for both of you. Another recommendation is for crack nipples or to avoid crack nipples, use nipple cream every single time. Every time. It's super important to reapply nipple cream. I never got crack nipples and um, I would apply it every time. I don't do it anymore. You just kind of find a point where you realize that you don't need it every time. Um, the nipple cream that I use is Mother Love. Okay, the baby has joined us now. Okay, so this is my original pot from when she was born, and I still have just the tiniest bit left. I use it nightly now, um, but I have another pot, but this will last a long time. Lamelin will last a long time too. I just prefer the Moto Love because it's smoother, and Lamelin's really hard to squeeze out of the tube, and it's not very pliable. So every single time you nurse, apply some nipple cream. Um, that's going to prevent cracking and bleeding because those first couple weeks are really really sore I know a lot of people say you know it shouldn't be painful but it is sore so it's really good to use nipple cream every single time sore is different than painful painful would be kind of you can't nurse it all because it's just excruciating sore is kind of toe curling for those first couple weeks because it was just every time she latched on it was really sore I knew that her latch was correct it was just you have to get used to the sensation of um, you know a baby sucking on your nipples 24 7 for a month so it's sore is different than painful um, so just remember that and you're not doing anything wrong if it's sore um, milkies milkies milk savers are great if you're trying to build up your freezer stash right away or just trying to build up a stash to have these are what they look like you nurse the baby on one side the breast that you're not nursing on you put this on your nipple goes in there and the milk collects in here I think it holds three ounces I would get probably an ounce and a half each time um, just don't forget about them and then bend over because they're gonna pour out the front of your bra but these are great another great thing that I still use are lily pads these are what they look like they are kind of a plastic nursing pad and they're designed to use at night to kind of suction onto your body so you don't leak. Um, sometimes milk will collect in here, but honestly, I use them now as a soothing agent every night. I wash them and then I kind of shake them off. I don't dry them. I leave the droplets of water on them, I stick them in the freezer, and let them freeze. I'm not sure if that's recommended by the manufacturer, but um, I put some nipple cream on and then I put these on on top and they are so soothing they feel wonderful after a long day of nursing so they're only supposed to last a couple months but these are my original pair six months and they're fine now I don't use them for milk like keeping the milk 
from leaking because they don't leak anymore, but they're great if you just stick them in their bra, they pretty much stay in place. When you're nursing and you feel like your supply is not there, it's okay to switch sides and then switch sides back to the original breast that you first started with. That gives your body a chance to, oh, excuse you, have a second and even third let down. So just keep switching breasts until you feel like your baby is satisfied. That will also stimulate your supply even further. I started my freezer stash um, within the week of her being born. What worked for me without creating an oversupply was to every morning I would pump one bottle from the breast she did not feed off of. Sometimes I empty the breast that she did feed off of. But mostly, I just pump the breast that she did not eat from, because she only eats from one breast at a time, um, except during gross birth. But that way, I was able to get a gigantic freezer stash. I donate milk now because she has problems with the bottle, and she only needs the bottle two days a week, and she only takes about 10 ounces from the bottle. So um, I donate to a milk bank and to another mother on Human Milk for Human Babies on Facebook. But that is the easiest way for me to build up a freezer stash. I understand that it's hard to pump uh, even once a day with a newborn. But if you have family there, let them have her. Um, just take that time in the morning. It takes probably 10 minutes maybe to sit and pump. Um, have some water. Have some breakfast. When she got a little bit older, um, she was able to... Um, wake up, nurse, and then she would lay in her co-sleeper for a little bit and play, and um, I was able to pump. So it's important to me, I think it's important to fit in some pumping time, especially if you think you're having supply issues. Another thing is to not schedule your feedings. The baby should eat as often, often and as long as they want. Um, especially when they're a newborn, they, they're not always eating that first couple you know, the whole time that you're nursing, they're just pacifying themselves, they're learning what they're doing. Um, so you may be there for an hour, you may be there for 15 minutes, but you need to let the baby eat for as long as they want to nurse. The easy thing to do to stimulate your supply and to be with baby is to baby wear. Um, we don't nurse when, we, when I wear her, just because it is hard to maneuver that when you have when you uh, have bigger breasts, we, I take her out of the sling to nurse, but if you can do that, that's a great way to be close with your baby, keep doing what you're doing, and to just nurse. And you can also nurse pretty discreetly in um, a sling if you're afraid of nursing in public. Also let your baby, when they're newborn, um, nap at your breasts. I know a lot of people, as the baby gets older, they don't want them to do that, and I necessarily don't want her to do that either. I don't let her suck to sleep for naps um, because I have to get things done. So, but when they're a newborn, um, napping at the breast is a great way to stimulate production, to build the bond with your child, to have skin to skin contact. Um, like I talked about in the beginning, um, make sure you have really good support from your family and your partner and um, the people surrounding you because that is going to be a great impact in your life in terms of breastfeeding and I mean even any parental choices that you're making you want the support of the people that are close to you. Do you see your bow? Is that a robot bow? And the last thing I think that is really super important is take as much time as you can from work if you're going back to work. I took all 12 weeks and I was able to build up my supply built up my freezer stash, um, established a really good breastfeeding bond with my child. I, I've heard people who can only take six weeks, they have a terrible time building up their supply. Um, they come to work, they're, you know, they don't have time to pump. I think it's really beneficial for you to take as much time as you can from work, even if it's unpaid time. I know it's hard to think of that you can't do with the money, but sometimes I think, you know, you have to reevaluate what's truly important, and for us, it was building that breastfeeding bond. So, hi, baby. She's a little bit cranky. She just woke up. Okay, so when you, your baby is a newborn, um, at least within the first couple of months, do not leave the baby for extended periods of time. This goes along with uh, taking as much time you can from work, because the longer you leave the child, the more your body thinks that you don't need that supply. So it's really important that you take 
um, you have your baby with you a lot. I mean, two hours, whatever. But it, leaving the baby for an extended period of time can be detrimental to your supply. Um, uh, one of the last things I have to talk about is co-sleeping. I know co-sleeping is a hot topic, but for us, well, she sleeps in the co-sleeper and she co-sleeps. Being in a bassinet, being next to the bed is really good for um, bringing the baby to nurse in the middle of the night. You're exhausted, um, you don't want to get up, you don't want to walk across the house. Having her next to me is, I get so much sleep, she's able to go right back to bed after she nurses. So it really is beneficial for my family and it might be for yours. So that is all I have to say about how we exclusively breastfed for six months and hopefully for a couple years to come now. Now that we've started solids, um, I might do a video on, you know, breastfeeding now, but it's really not that much different. Maybe in a couple months I'll do it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and please, if you have um, questions, do, do not hesitate to contact your local lactation consultant or Lily J. Lee um, or any other, you know, breastfeeding moms in your area. I really wish you success in your breastfeeding journeys. Let me know if you have any questions below and I will try to answer them. We will talk to you guys later.